All right, so I guess I should start. What I want to do today is sort of show you how to manipulate comb. This particular comb is small. What you never want to do is tilt it up like that because it'll snap off. Now this comb is light enough. There's nothing in it but a little bit of pollen. I'm oh, sorry, a little bit of honey it looks like. But you always want to keep it like this where the comb is always in the same plane as gravity never fighting gravity or it snaps off. I can do that with this as an example. I can't do it with any others. And then putting comb back to avoid squishing bees, you put one end uh, flush first with the other one at an angle and then slowly slide this over. And as you squish a bee, give them a moment to get out of the way and you can eventually make it flush. When you break the bar from the propolis, I tilt it to the left to the right, so I'm at an angle. I can feel right then if there is a burr comb, also known as a brace comb. This looks like honey stores and lots of it coming in. These guys don't like the cotton string that is the guide string along the top that was soaked in beeswax. It was the original guide. Okay, no sudden movements. Now eight. Eight looks like a full comb. Mix of honey and drone cell. There's drone sized cells to the outside. Yeah, there's definitely some honey coming in. Look how they're festooning. Isn't that beautiful? Now the most likely chance, most likely time, when you'll get stung with a top bar hive is when you're picking up the bar originally and you can't see around the edge and you mash a bee, which in bee protocol is a big no-no and you deserve to be stung for that. So be quite gentle when you first pick up these bars to make sure that you do not have a bee underneath you. It's all about touch. Okay, these are definitely drone combs. And this is uh, my, my bar seven, which I start at bar zero. So this is most people's eighth bar. So this is probably the equivalent of a full deep if you were using a Langstroth. And they've got hunting here mixed with lots and lots of drone comb. Mighty big drones. Now I am interested in cutting open a few of my drone combs, drone cells, looking for Varroa.
this hive has been remarkably uh, low appearance of varroa. In fact, I haven't seen any drop, but I haven't put down a white sheet to check my varroa. I haven't seen them on any of the bees, and I keep looking for them. There's a bit of comb that needs to be just pulled out. There's no brood in it. They'll repair it. This has got a really good pattern. I'm looking for the queen. I'm looking for the ros rosette pattern they make around the queen. I don't see it. I'm also looking for any Varroa. No signs of Varroa. Some more manipulations is if you want to know where to start, you notice the more solid it sounds that there's probably comb on it. So you can start your top bars wherever you've got the sound of a solid bar. And then you want to back up two to the, to the left from where you hear a solid bar because a beginning bar is going to be uh, kind of hollow, kind of solid. All right, this is completely brood comb now. A little bit of pollen stores. I see no honey along the top. It has been totally consumed up there. So it's become completely, completely brood. And it's at times like these that if you're stung, you must not drop this brood comb. Your honey production depends on it. There's going to be a thousand to two thousand bees. They're going to come out of that brood comb. So by all means, take care of them. In the event of a disaster where the brood comb does come off the bar, you can put the brood comb with a stick in it to prop it up like a little teepee in the back of the uh, hive, and the bees will let it hatch, and they will keep it warm, assuming you do it at a time of the year where there are enough surplus bees. And if you do it at a bad time of the year, You'll have to reattach uh, either using some string or I think there was a, an interesting Polish uh, 